and welcome in to Let's Analyze Barricade. This is a wonderful indie title being made by Sockhouse Studios. Sockhouse displays a, a good utilization of typography. You can see there's only a couple of different typographic styles. We've got the main title, we have the buttons, and then UI text. Limited himself to three different typographic styles. Very, very good. Limit your typographic styles. You'll introduce a lot less variance. It'll feel more put together. Promises Call of Duty style zombie wave defense along with barricading mechanics, building up uh, a structure and defending it. It's also a boomer shooter, which means uh, probably nothing to many of you on the internet. But to old people like me, it's fantastic, because it means uh, a, a re hearkening back to olden times of how games used to be made. And I get to stand here and say, back in my day, we made things right. So as you can see here, we're all about building this barricade. I have this little gravity gun thing here that I can rotate objects around with. I can get it ready and pin it. Now monsters have to punch through these things before they can get to me. And I don't really care about me. I can definitely lose the game if I don't do it, if I die. But really what we're trying to defend is this thing. All the monsters in this game hate vending machines. This is new zombie lore. Monsters hate vending machines. So they're going to be rushing in trying to knock this out. The more I kill things and the more I repair my barricade, the more money I'll get. And then that money will be used over here to buy new weapons and ammo. I like that there's two loss conditions and not just the one. So you can kind of play them off of each other. Very clever. That does increase empowerment. As a boomer shooter, there's no aimed out sights. There's no cover. There's no uh, reloading even. Just a bunch of guns, and they all have different primary and secondary fires. This gun, uh, primary gun is a pistol. Right click is like a big high damage, like five times damage sort of shot. I think there are some problems with some of the way that the game communicates, um, but the developer has been making a lot of fixes to those. The pistol, for example, the alternate fire used to be just plain white circles, whereas now they are those good bullet icons. And I think you could even increase that a little bit. Go from those plain bullet icons to now being a bullet icon like with a blast behind it or something, or even just a blast icon, I think would communicate that idea of a really heavy hit a lot more. So with that, we're going to open the doors. We're going to try and survive for a lot of waves. We'll see how long we make it for. So we're going to go through. We can press Z to phase through obstacles. I'm just going to start throwing down some more barricade material. I have played a couple rounds of this, and I have yet to really see why um, I would do more than one barricade at a time. But also, I've never beaten the game yet, so it could just be... I'm bad at it. Who who could ever possibly imagine that that might be the case? Also, I'm wondering if I just lay stuff on the ground, will that fake out the AI? Like, can the AI jump over things? Or does that become a full horizontal or full, full vertical width barricade? We only have two more objects we can barricade before we run out of ammo, and we don't have any money to buy more ammo, so we'll just kind of get this set up. There we go. That is great. I do love the rotation. Right there. Pull out our pistol. And then, oh, we, we start the wave over here. Here we go. No barricade, no press. We got barricades. We got barricades coming out the nose. So let's see uh, what the zombies have in store for us here. Where are they going? Okay, so they're going to spawn from there. Oop, we got guys coming all the way over here. Up. Whoops. Anything coming from over here? I'm not seeing anything. So we're gonna play the game uh, and just kind of experience it. And then after we've experienced it, that's when we'll go in and talk about the design elements that I think work and don't work. Whoop, there you are. This is a bigger level, level than the first one. It's a lot more closed off as well, which is interesting. There's two levels currently in the demo. And the first level is a lot more open. So this is a very big change of pace. All of the different pathways, if we remember Miller's Law, that the average person can keep about seven plus or minus two things in their short-term memory at any given point. It allows the player to remember kind of what the level layout is. It's not too big, it's not too wild, and forces you to stay engaged with the anatomy of the level itself. Very good. If it was much bigger, you wouldn't be able to keep it in memory. You wouldn't really go around hunting for things. If it were much smaller, it'd be too boring. It wouldn't be very interesting. 
So I think he's got some good sizes for the levels there. The pistol is strong. It's not as strong as some of the cool weapons you can get. And they all have really interesting uh, alternative fires, right? So we're going to go get some more ammo. Did I hear a bad guy? Did I hear a bad guy? There is a bad guy. What are you doing? We're in between waves. Sir, calm it down, please. All right, let's uh, clip this guy into there. Repair. We definitely want to maximize on repair time because it gives us money, right? So we want to be repairing. We're incentivized to repair, especially when money's pretty a pretty precious commodity. Come on, there we go. One very cool thing about the barricades, though, is that it does increase that feeling of ownership. You were building your own barricade. Your barricade is probably going to be different from everybody else's barricades. So you feel a lot of ownership over that, and I think that's really strong. I think it's something that could be dialed into even more in the future, to be frank. Oh dear. All right. We are out of time. Let's keep going. Uh, definitely hearing some gurgling. Whoa! There we are. Hi! <laughs> Anything's a horror game if you're just not paying enough attention. <laughs> okay, good. Prepare, get some money. We're almost at a thousand. As soon as we hit a thousand, we're gonna rush that store. Oh, man. Yeah, going with multi multiple barricades is rough. Because you spend so much time phasing through things. It, it really eats away at how much you can do. Ah, oh, headcrabs. Do not like the headcrabs. Oh no, that guy totally killed everything. That's not good. Ow, oh, jeez. I, I am a pro gamer. I don't know if you've noticed this. But, um, you know, my, my list of expertise does not extend merely to repairing the There we go. Anything in here I can repair? Uh, yes, the shelf! That'll be a lot of money. Oh, we have like $1,500. This is great. Okay, let's do some cleanup on whoever is left. Oh, snap. That's a lot. That's not good. That's not good. All right. <laughs> now, the big problem is we also have taken some damage. And we can heal, but it does cost a lot of money. So... We're going to heal up until uh, $1,000, or we get full health. It looks like we're fine. Let's go get a new weapon. What do we get? And it does take a little bit of time as well for the new weapon to spawn in. And if you leave the weapon for too long, it disappears. And the buying of the new gun hypes up the randomness, the unpredictability, which is great. You are glued to that vending machine thinking, ooh, what cool new tool am I going to be able to get to knock down these zombies? Because our, our other guns are getting pretty low. And then we can start kind of rebarricading things. There we go. Nailed. Nailed it. Ha. Heal that up. That's being a good barricade. I mean, it's taking some damage. That means it's getting used. Oops. Come on. Where's the green? Where's the green? There it is. Oh, dear. Okay, so we need something on the floor over here. Jeez. What was that? Is it a grenade launcher? Is that the second dire secondary fire on this thing? What was that? grenade launcher that we had it took a while for me to notice that circle going back around the reticle I'm, I'm not totally sure how to improve on that i need to like really look at it because i was trying to fend off hordes of zombies while i was taking a look at it something could be done there oh dear and uh the game is kind of meant to be played very darkly so it's kind of hard to pick out these low contrast enemies oh dear oh dear Oh man, especially when it like the light the the help starts going. That's that's no good. That's no good. Okay. There we go. No, no, don't kill me. 
I am very close to dying. Heal. Yeah, that was a bad round. That's been very bad. In all of the gameplay that you just saw, there is no downtime, and I have the ability to move around, blast, and feel in control of things. If this were a tactical shooter, or a turn-based game, right? Think about a turn-based wave defense. Something like The Last Spell did it very well, but it's very difficult to get those high-intensity tension spikes that you want. Boomer Shooter, it's all about removing obstacles to the player. It's all about just run and gun and enjoy that feeling. So you get to have that joy that comes from getting the guns that you've been wanting, fishing around in that vending machine for whatever you're looking for, and then playing with it. It's very nice. Whenever we talk game design, we're always trying to talk about dramatic tension cycles, right? We want to increase the tension for the player and then decrease it. And you want to do that over and over and over again. And when you get really, really good at it, you can layer the different things on top of each other. Because dramatic tension, that feeling of, is this going to work? Is it going to happen? Are we going to save the world? Those dramatic tension cycles are what drive interest. That's what keep you engaged. I promise you, you've never been bored when you've been high tension. So the wave style mechanics allow for moments of high tension when you're fighting stuff off and then low tension in between the wave. And the reason why I think this pairs very well with the boomer shooter is because it allows you to dial up the intensity very, very, very high. We'll do one more round. Thanks for playing. You can wishlist, say no thanks. You get a time counter. Wishlist it on Steam. Don't make this man go homeless. Sockhouse Studios is a good guy. All right, let's jump in. We're going to do the other map. And I think you'll start to see kind of how things are a little bit different. That apartments map is much more closed off. Way more closed off. We're going to open the do doors and start barricading. And yeah, table... While it covers up a lot of space, I'm seeing is kind of awful because it makes it so you can't see anything. And I feel like in order to really win at this game, you need barricades that are going to give you visibility so you can shoot things. Like, this is fantastic. This little angle here, really good because I can shoot head crabs, I can shoot the zombies, I can do all sorts of stuff all day long. Drop that right there. Put a chair in, kind of in the middle to try and catch anyone out. And then I think what we're going to do is we're going to start just bringing as many barricade materials as I can and put them a little bit out of the way. So I don't think anyone is going to, um, any of the enemies are just going to path into them and start fighting them. But they will be close by so I can patch up my barricade with extra stuff if I need to. We're going to see how this shakes out. Come on. There we go. In fact, now that I'm on the other side of the barricade, I can probably kind of do some stuff like that. Just buff it up a little bit. Now this phase, this kind of, we get like five minutes to prepare, which makes me think the creator of the game thinks that there is a lot to do to prepare, when usually I have my barricade set up in about 30 seconds. And that makes me think, I'm probably not doing what the creator is intending here, right? And I'm assuming if this, like, scavenging of the level for parts is a big part of the game. We'll see how effective it is. Because there's a big part of me that just says, I, I don't see how making multiple barricades is feasible. That last attempt, we were running between so many different places and phasing through barricades, and you can't shoot while you're phasing... And it was just a big mess. Like, it was really painful. And so if this is what's intended, then we're going to have uh, some, some good stuff to talk about afterwards. There we go. Because I have thoughts on that. If that is the case. We still have two and a half minutes, and I'm making a huge stockpile of stuff over here. Gotta get the water cooler. You gotta get the water cooler. Okay. So we can throw this over here. And we're just, I mean, we're just scavenging, really. I do notice that the things that have more hit points tend to have uh, a greater reduction in speed, which is smart. It 
feels good, it's the way that it should be, right? It's also It also means it's a higher, like, risk-reward. And I guess that also means maybe don't stockpile things, right? Because if you find these really high-value obstacles, uh, then it's going to take a long, long time to get them where you need, need them to be. Whoops. Come on. There we go. Me, every single time I need to take out the trash? Okay. Come on. Uh, oh, can I not jump with that one? Is it too heavy? Mm. So yeah, like I'm starting to wonder. I, mean, I don't know, maybe my strategy is wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to get to just one giant barricade. Maybe I should be doing multiples. And then have them kind of slow down the waves. Maybe it's wave management. That uh, setting up multiple layers of barricades so that you only get guys coming from, like, one or two directions at a time. I don't know. We're about to find out, though. Let's see. I've stockpiled a bunch. I set up a couple of little small barricades. Let's see what we can make happen here. Wave started. So you can see, we get a lot more visibility into kind of everything that's happening. Much, much more open level. We're doing good. I mean, the first wave's easy, but... Come on. There we go. Can we get it downtown? Nice. Got him. Okay. MLG no scope. 365. Seven days a week. 24 degrees. <laughs> Uh, another guy down here. Okay. Oh, someone coming up. You can't get away from me. They're so noisy, you know? It's like, this isn't your basic zombie moaning. This is like banshee wailing. Did we get everything? One second. So we can head back to the base. $925. In fact, do we have anything to repair? We do. I really want to get to that $1,000. This is probably the easy fix. Oh man, are we really like 20 short? Oh, that would be so tragic. There we go, that's gonna get it. Nice. Yeah, and like you get punished so heavily for phasing through things. It makes you it makes me think that you may want multiple layers, but you don't want to have to be traveling through multiple layers at the most. Because it's so painful to have to do that. Oh, you know what? No, we can't get a gun. We need ammo. Yeah, bummer. And some healing. All right. Do we get extra money if we do a next wave? No, no, we don't. Okay, so you, so you really want to take all the time that you you can. Got him. Right. Oh, jeez, that was fast. Airs in. You. There's there's definitely a lot of running and gunning, right? Like a lot of multitasking, and the repairing of the barricades I think is a really important element in this game because it kind of gives you something to do when you're on the run. Oh man, that does so much. It's like 50 damage on that. Fix that. Blast you. Fix that. Okay, we got a vomit train right next to us. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, one of the really annoying things is that you you hurt your own barricade. So if you shoot it, it takes damage. Oh gosh. Okay. 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 That was good. That was good. Yeah, and with the, the way that pistol works, you kind of want to just, like, throw it out for the big blast and then spend the rest of your time repairing. That's what I'm starting to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Can you please sleep? Why are we being so fussy? Right during work time. Okay. Let's get a weapon. We finally have enough to get a weapon. Uh, any last minute repairs. I think that's good. Some more money. Or just good. Uh, some more money. Some more uh, ammo. We got the sniper rifle. Now, I did mention this is a boomer shooter with no aim down sights. So I'm curious what the alt fire is going to be here. It's an aim down sights. That is a that is a lie. I'm gonna ask for my money back. I'm gonna refund this. <laughs> this completely free demo. Because there's aim down sights. Alright. Let's patch everything up. What wave are we on? Three? Yeah. Yeah, this is a really tough game. It's a very, very tough game. But that may be appealing to you. That may be what you're looking for. It is beatable, I know that much. I don't think I've ever made it past wave four, though. Some things that I feel could use some support. The feeling of empowerment, right? I feel very in control up until the latter waves. And of course that's by design, but I feel like a lot of the control gets ripped away from me. I feel like I do not have the ability to kill things as fast as I need to in order to make progress. And that's rough. Right? When that feeling of empowerment goes away, that's when you lose people. Because now it's not high tension. It, it gets high tension for a very small moment and then tanks. Because it's like, well, what on earth was I supposed to do there? Even if they may have been able to do something, I don't feel empowered, which is the big problem. I think that's showcased by how I was discussing barricading throughout the whole play. Like, do I do tons of little ones? Do I focus all in on one area, like a tower defense game? And that question was very difficult. Just barely getting to that barrier in time. My goodness, that was close. Woo! Very, very close. Oh dear. I think the layers of barricade are kind of giving me enough time to get stuff repaired. So that's something to consider, right? I think some of these zombies are harder than other zombies. That was satisfying. That was good. So yeah, how do we set up long sight lines where we can just blast away at things? This game has a philosophical conundrum for me. Of like, how do we actually get that to happen? Get our heal going. We're definitely gonna need more ammo. Although I didn't use very much of this. A revolver shotgun. There we go. Refill our ammo. And we'll show off the revolver shotgun as soon as this next wave starts. That was weird that uh, the pallet tooltip was still there even though I wasn't like, hitting it. I do think this approach is also healthy. Like, that's, that's one struggle I have. Is, like, how do I determine what is actually working? Oh, snap. There are monsters here. I thought I had cleared everything. All right, all right. All right, that's fine, that's fine. I didn't need that barricade anyway, it's fine. The name of the game is barricade, but whatever, it's fine. Look, more barricades, done. But no sight line, right? Like putting that sofa there makes it a lot stronger, but now I just, I can't see anything. So I have to be outside of the barricade, which means dudes are gonna come like at me. Pop, pop. And maybe there's something of like target prioritization. You know, making sure that you're going after the, the balloons first. Oh, darn it. But you can see how, like, how much I'm racking my brain trying to find the right solution to this puzzle. Like, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good puzzle. And I don't actually know what the up Okay, so it's just, uh, you can, you can hold it in. It's auto-fire. Jeez, 
Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Ah. Out of ammo for the shotgun. Oh gosh, getting getting beaten down. Okay. Ah, head crabs. Leave me alone. Ouch. Repair. Ah. Yikes. Yikes, 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 yikes. Yeah, we have a low fire rate. And when you don't kill the zombies in one hit, it is rough. Leave me alone! Ah! All right. All right. We'll reset. We'll reset. Jeez. Ah, so many head crabs. Head crabs do seem to, like, really prioritize the player. There's a lot of scarcity in the game. You only have so many barricade elements, and you know that when you lose a barricade element, it's a big deal, especially if it's a high value hit point one, like one of those cement barriers. One of those goes down. It's painful emotionally. Crazy to me. All right, uh, let's dive in here. I like our weapons, I just wish like, they did a little more damage. I wish I could upgrade them or something, you know? If I could get the sniper to one-shot zombies, then we'd be in a pretty good spot right now. Repair. Repair. Once again, fixing toilets like every good barricader does. And, I don't know, let's just start, like, throwing some stuff down, I guess? Ah, not you. You're too much of a sight blocker. Come on. There we go. I'm trying to find a way that I can, like, be inside the barricade and see everything I need to in order to kill things. I don't know. And I don't think headshots are a thing. Oh, snap, they are. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah! I don't even know what happened there. <laughs> so there we go, that's Barricade. That's the farthest I've ever gotten. My goodness, it is tough. But overall, what I'm left feeling with when I play Barricade is this really cool feeling of, man, I want to try again and see if I can beat it. But then also at the same time feeling at a loss and feeling, I don't know if I can. And I wish there were more ways that I could take control of the game. I wish I could say, you know, oh, maybe I need to go do some more relic hunting or something, right? Which is, if you look at roguelikes like Slay the Spire, they do very well. And I think due to the random nature of the gun distribution in this, it does have some roguelike elements. I think it's going to get compared in that direction. And so you really only have a couple of vectors with which to control your destiny. You have the elements that you barricade with, and you have your gun, and then your player skill. And so when everything starts getting crazy overwhelming, if you don't have a, a clear vision on how to actually handle that, you just lose. And I think that's maybe where my main problem is, is I don't know what high level gameplay for Barricade really looks like. And that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to get some sort of insight from the game into this is how you more or less manage things so that I can know, oh, I'm just playing poorly or, oh, I'm playing incorrectly. I'm going in the wrong direction. So that, that would be my only comment for Barricade as a whole. That being said, it is a ton of fun. I've played multiple runs on this, and uh, I do hope to beat it. In fact, when I'm done recording, I plan on picking it back up again and seeing if I can just make it through a full darn run. So with that, that is Barricade. Please go check it out. Link is in the comments. It's a great time. There's a demo. It's available for free 99. You won't regret your time. With that, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.